What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Uh, Frank, happy Canadian Thanksgiving yesterday. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, we had, we, had, we had a lot of family time and a lot of eating and actually too much eating. So I uh, I woke up today with a sugar hangover. But yeah. uh, all, all good. Great great to, uh, to hang with family for sure. Now, this has nothing to do with what we're on for, but Canadian Thanksgiving versus U.S. Thanksgiving. I mean, are you guys doing turkey and mashed potatoes and pumpkin pie? and 100% the same, yeah. Yeah, pumpkin Same pie, thing. apple pie, turkey, the whole nine. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Cran- cranberry I, and uh, all that good stuff. I think I told you this. So I went to college in Idaho, and we had a lot of Canadian kids from Alberta that would come down there. Um, and they were always like, you know, like, the U.S. is okay, but man, Canada, man, Canada. And as, a, as an 18-year-old kid, I was like, just go back to Canada then, like, if it's so great. Right. And then I started going to Canada. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, they were right. Canada is amazing to the point to where we were in Disney world last week. And my wife, we went to Canada at Epcot and I full on in front of like hundreds of people as I'm walking, just blasted out the Canadian national anthem, which I learned by going to golden ice hockey games. And I'm just like, I've got this deep seated. So like my, uh, my complexion is Irish from my, from my Irish ancestors. Uh, the blood that runs through my veins is from Mexico, from my Mexican ancestors. But my heart kind of belongs to Canada a little bit. I, I love it oh, up there. Nice. So yeah. happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This. Yeah. So let's get into this. Um, you and I connected a couple of months ago. You had seen some of the content that we had created. I think you're, you got your, you know, kind of thinking, of, looking at real a little bit. Yeah. So take everybody back to kind of, you've been running your own independent brokerage. Yep. And I think it was Versace Group. Yeah. Uh, Versace Real Estate. Yeah. Yeah. Versace Real Estate. So you're running your independent brokerage. What got you thinking at all? Like, man, maybe there's a little bit of a better way to do this. Like what was the genesis of this idea? Sure. So I'll kind of, I'll, I'll, I'll stair step it back to uh, sort of the beginning of the beginning. Um, so, I, so I've been in the business here for 20 years. Um, seven of those 20 uh, was running my own brokerage at Versace Real Estate. So prior to that, um, I was over at uh, Remax and, um, you know, doing good production by myself. And then, of course, looking at what's the next step. So the next step, of course, was, hey, let's develop a team and uh, hand out some leads and all that kind of good stuff. And so started to grow that direction. Uh, Remax's model, as you start to grow your team larger, of course, your expenses go up because every team member has a a fee. Uh, So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, you know, if we start adding more team members, uh, maybe there's an opportunity where I could sort of break away, create my own brokerage and then uh, remove those expenses for the agents and then just kind of make it up on the splits. Um, So, you know, got some office space, got some signage, got a pretty cool location and all that good stuff and and opened up the brokerage and then, um, you know, started, you know, trying to bring in some agents and stuff like that. At the same time, being a producer myself, um, and so there's, you know, a lot of juggling, as you know, to kind of pull that off. And then at one point we got up to about, you know, eight agents. We had an admin assistant, we had an ISA, we had a marketing person, um, kind of chugging along and, um, you know, some agents are producers and some agents yeah. are not. And so, you know, there there's, I always look at it as like three hats that I'm, I'm wearing. Uh, you know, the one hat is, Hey, you're an agent, you got to produce. Uh, then the other hat is you're a team leader. Bless you. Um, you're a team leader. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, and as a team leader, of course, you, you produce through others. Uh, so that, you know, those are two revenue generating activities in my mind. And then the third yeah. one was the brokerage. And so, you know, now having run a brokerage for, for seven years and seeing all the administrative side of it, the conveyancing side of it, the invoicing for lawyers and collecting checks and depositing checks and uh, year end accounting audit on our trust account. Like there's just a lot of like non dollar productive activity that's going on with, with running a brokerage. And um, so of course you put someone in that seat to manage all that um, as best as they can and train, train them and, and make sure that they're, they're doing the process as you set it out. Um, but then there's turnover in that position. So anytime there's turnover, well, who does the job come back to? It comes back to me. And then I've got to train yeah. someone else and get them up to speed and all that stuff. So, um, just sort of looking at the three hats, um, I'm like, yes, the, the, the producer hat as an agent, that makes sense. It's making money, uh, producing through others and training and coaching and holding people accountable and, you know, handing out leads and all that stuff. Yes, that makes sense. It's making money. The brokerage side of it actually was a bit of a drain. 
right? Yeah. So, um, you know, having all that admin and all that, just that that heavy stuff that really doesn't doesn't make money unless, of course, you scale it massively. Then, then of course. But we're a small little team boutique, right? There's there's just us inside of the brokerage, so we're basically a teamerage, I guess is the word. Um, right, right. And uh, and so I was kind of looking at, uh, you know, what is the next step, right? I mean, how how do I? Um, what is there any value in keeping the brokerage? I mean, is it sellable? Um, and so those were some issues going through my mind. I mean, I definitely saw EXP when it came uh, uh, came to Winnipeg, and you know, certainly looked at that option. Um, I saw Real uh, before it came to Winnipeg, and uh, kind of looked at that option. I was I was involved with something else at the time, which didn't make sense to make the change. Um, but for whatever reason, Real in our marketplace, you know, has really taken off and uh, and yeah. grown fantastic, and a lot of great agents are are part of that company now here in in Winnipeg. Yeah. So here I am poking around online going, okay, well, let's, let's learn more and let's dive in. And so watching videos and of course your, you know, your content came up and you're really good yeah. at uh, describing everything um, as far as the real culture and the opportunity and the rev share and, you know, these, these nice little quick snippets. And then you've got some <laughs> extent, extended content that really dives a little bit deeper. And I just really liked your style and how you, uh, how you discussed everything and, and, uh, and, um, explained everything so there there you go then i then i reached out to you and here we are chatting now so yeah and i think that i mean our our journey was so similar we were remax guys we when you added up what we were paying to remax same thing we were like dude we could just run our own thing yep we ran our own thing and then went like wow this isn't it's not that it wasn't profitable it's just it's it's for like we all have a finite amount of time right you're a family yep. guy i'm a family guy yep and it's like, okay, cool. Well, if I'm going to spend my time doing something, there has to be a return on that investment. Mm -hmm. And we kind of went through that same thing where we were happily running our brokerage, happily, I would say, like we were profitably running our brokerage through COVID when real landed on our plate. Yeah. Um, we, we, we were intrigued with the EXP conversation as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost funny because like I look at it and you may feel the same way. Like EXP kind of broke the, broke the, the ice for me. Yeah. Um, I didn't love the way it launched in Vegas. I'm a huge EXP fan, but at least yeah. locally, it was kind of like, I, this isn't really my vibe. Yeah. I had a lot of misconceptions mm -hmm. where it was like, Hey, why is everybody just obsessed with recruiting? Just, you know, just go close deals. Yeah. But then I saw, I think the benefit real has is the second mouse to the cheese guys like you and I saw people go over there and we're like, all right, well, there is actually some stuff happening there. Yeah. So I guess, you know, I just love to get things out in the open. Why, when you started opening your mind and saying, all right, well, maybe there, maybe I'm going to take Versace group of Versace realty a different way. What was attractive to you about real versus an EXP or some of the other uh, options out there? What was it that, that real specifically was attractive to you? Um, so when I was, I mean, if we're going to do like set up sort of a side by side comparison, um, I was looking at, uh, who in our marketplace has joined real and who in our marketplace has joined EXP. And I'm, I'm not taking away from any agent at any company. They're both great companies. Right. They both have a lot to offer. There's great agents at both companies. Just the way, um, I guess real launched in Winnipeg anyway, was it, it really took off and there was a lot of, yeah. uh, a lot of good names top players i guess that that jumped over so it kind of caught my attention there and then, okay well let's let's really look in a little bit closer um the the lower cap of course is uh, is something that's attractive um i would say as well the um uh i guess the opportunity if you want to call sure. it that as far yeah. as growth you know real uh, real is still kind of a bit of a baby um, mm -hmm. in terms of where it sits in the marketplace and, and the growth opportunity, even just to catch up to the number of agents over at eXp, for example. Um, sure. I mean, we got a double, we got a triple, we got a quadruple to, to get there. So, I mean, that to me is a huge, huge opportunity in terms of growth. Um, yeah. And, uh, and the stock again, you know, when nobody's a predictor of stock and, and values and, and numbers, but, um, you know, when you sort of look at where it's positioned today and where it could go, um, I think there's some huge upside there. So, you know, you start aligning all of these things together, uh, you know, the people, 
uh, the opportunity for growth, uh, the rev share, the stock opportunity, um, you know, and, and you start to think, well, maybe there's something here. I should take a little closer look at what this is all about. Um, and so I don't want to make this an EXP versus sure. real conversation, but it is something that, of course, anybody who's thinking about going and joining a virtual brokerage, uh, those are pretty much your two op options right now. So well, you know, it's, natural. it's natural to think that. And everybody goes through it, right? Which is why I like, not in a disparaging way at all. I, I love to just discuss, because <clears throat> it's always an undertone, but yeah. I like to just get right to the heart of it. And sure. now, full disclosure, if I was deciding between Coldwell Banker and Brookshire Hathaway, yeah. very similar structures. And so yeah. it's like, yeah, I mean, in my market, Coldwell's doing this, Brookshire's doing that. I, I think to hit on that opportunity side of things, when you look at the landscape, because I'm really big on this, percentage of market saturation. Mm -hmm. So there's 2 million licensed real estate professionals in North, the, uh, North America, as far as US and Canada, there's about 1.5 million realtors. Mm -hmm. So current, as far as I could find, EXP is around 85,000 agents, maybe more, maybe less. That's just like a quick search I did. Reels at 22,000. Right. So to your point, from a market saturation standpoint, we have 4X growth to just even get to where they are. Right. And so I think there is some 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 excitement there. But now we're second mouse of the cheese. There's always going to be the third and fourth mouse of the cheese going like, yeah. well, we're at 2000 agents. So we have 40x growth. <laughs> and so it's yeah. like, it's not yeah. just the opportunity. So from an economic standpoint, what made it what made real so attractive to you and your agents? Because other small, you know, independent brokerages, you know, 10 to 30 agents are going to look at it and go from an economic standpoint, you're recapturing pretty much everything right now, but you also have all the cost and liability. Mm -hmm. So you move over to real where revenue share, and then you're still doing your team splits and stuff like that. You've alleviated some of the liability. Like, well, what are the economics that, that made sense to someone like you or someone in your shoes? Um, so for example, when I said, uh, you know, someone's got to be on staff dealing with all the uh, conveyancing, the invoicing, the check writing, the QuickBooks, the trust account audits, all of that stuff. So now that's just off my plate. Right. Right. And, and so for me, like I was looking at it and saying like, how do I create simplicity on my life? And really what makes money in the business? It's, it's, it's revenue producing activities. It's selling houses. Like you have to be production focused, <laughs> right? Like if you don't sell right. houses, you don't make money. And so when right. I was just looking at, okay, now I've got a situation where I'm spending a percentage of my time, um, not focused on either myself personally generating revenue or uh, helping my team to generate revenue, whether that's through marketing or lead gen or coaching or scripting or training or accountability or whatever. Uh, if I'm spending time over on the administrative side, that that's a brain clutter. That's a that's a time suck. Um, and it's also a cost too. So like I have a person in that seat that I have to pay. Um, so there's, you know, whatever, I mean, it wasn't a massive expense, but say 30 grand a year, 35 grand a year, something like that. Um, you know, now that's just gone. And the way the real app works, and again, I haven't really dived into it full fledged because I'm literally new. Um, when I when I looked at the way that is operating and how it's so um, easy to manage your transactions online and all the conveyancing is done online, all the check depositing is done online, everything is really like right from your app. Um, right. I, I just thought like what an what an incredible opportunity to not only save money, but save time and free up the brain. Yeah. Because that, because if you've if you've got too many, if you're chasing, you know, my dad always said you chase two rabbits, you catch none. Um, and, <laughs> and so, you know, as a broker, uh, and I would invite any other broker of a, I mean, I I don't have a massive operation where I've got you know tons and tons of people that are on staff. So if you're running a small operation, like every person counts, every move counts, every uh, brain uh, um, uh, focus of concentration counts. And so to me, it was really a, a clarity and a simplicity uh, move. Yeah, no, I love that. Well, we'll talk about this a little bit, Frank. So you're in Winnipeg. Um, as a as a real estate brokerage, you had some limitations as far as your province, as far as your brick and mortar office. Yep. What did the what did the opportunity with borderless growth mean to you? And I don't mean border like U.S. Canada border, but right now it's like you can grow in other areas of Canada. You can sponsor and work with agents in the U.S. Like how much of that? How much of your focus? I, I'm sure you still got a, a decent amount of your focus locally. 
Yeah. But how does being at real change your focus to more of a North American agents, you know, from Tom Ferry or Mike Ferry or, you know what I mean? Like Craig yeah. Proctor or yep. whatever it is. Like how much, how much does the borderless growth opportunity mean to you? I think it's huge because anytime you put any limitations on, um, on, uh, and on increasing your revenue opportunity, well then that that's the, that's the bottleneck. Um, yeah. and so, so, so having the opportunity now to look out of city, out of province, uh, across province, uh, you know, e even to the U S um, it just completely changes the game. Um, you know, one of the things I, I always thought about, you know, having a brokerage was, okay, well, you know, we'll grow this thing. We'll add some agents. And then, you know, maybe there's some value there at the end of the day. Um, I was in a coaching program and, you know, they gave the example of, you know, a, a dry cleaner, you know, dry cleaner works for, for 20 years. And, uh, and at the end of the day is built up a business that he can walk away from and sell. Uh, well, a lot of yeah. agents, right. You, you could be in the business for how, as long as you want. And I mean, at the end of the day, you might not have anything to sell, including owning a brokerage. So there's no guarantee that you're walking away with, with any, uh, with any, uh, money at the end of the day, as far as a saleable asset. So then right. what's the next, what's the next best thing? is well stock in a company that is sellable. Um, yeah. Building out a revenue share group cross border that has yeah. continual value, that's willable, um, you know, and, and generating some passive income where you don't necessarily, it's not all reliant on production focus. So these are some of the things that really stuck in my mind. I mean, I'm 51, uh, so hopefully I've got a long runway, uh, <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm thinking legacy, I'm thinking what's the next step? Um, yeah. you know, what's the, not, not exit plan, but like, uh, what's the residual value here and, sure. and what happens if I, what happens if something happens to me? Yeah. Like I've got a buddy that just had, um, you know, open heart surgery and he was out of commission for a, a good month, over a month. And yeah. I just thought like, what, what if that ever happened to me? I mean, here I am, I'm the only broker in charge of the office and I'm gone for a month and I'm also yeah, a producer yeah. and, uh, you know, my team's on their own and no, who's taking care of paperwork and signing checks and all this stuff. And I mean, that's a huge liability. So for these sure. are some of the thoughts that are going through my brain, making me think, uh, you know, at the end of the day is, is having a, a small boutique brokerage, uh, team ridge, is it, is, is there value there? long-term value, yeah. residual value. And, and I came to the conclusion that there just, there just isn't, you know, do I like to see my name on the sign and all that stuff? And from an <laughs> ego perspective, of course it's nice. Uh, but you know, I think I'm past that here at this point. So. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. I've got two more questions. Um, when we get to the, um, the question with your agents, as far as like, how, how did they receive it? What was their takeaway? Like what, um, like if, if they said like, wh what about me, your agents? Mm -hmm. Like, how does this affect us, Frank? Like you're our broker. Mm -hmm. Like now we're moving to this other company. I think a lot of brokers who consider this move are like, well, uh, it makes sense for me. And one of the things that I loved was moving to real was like a, a win-win and mm -hmm. it took a while for his agents to almost believe it. Because yeah. it's like, there are no, in the world, there's just not a lot of win-wins, right? We're yeah. going through, in the U.S. right now, political elections. Mm -hmm. Half of the country is going to feel like they won. Half of the country is going to feel like they lost. It's like, right. there's just no way that everybody's like, oh my gosh, this is great, like across the entire United States. So in, in the business sense, there's very rarely win-wins as well. So how did your agents take the news? How did your agents take the move? Like, you know, kind of like the woof them, what's in it for me type thing. Yeah. So, I mean, if I'm, if I'm going in and I'm going to make any sort of like a recommendation for change, um, I'm very conscious and cautious of how that's done. So I didn't just walk in and say, Hey, tomorrow we're done. Um, you know, I actually put together a presentation, uh, you know, you and Amy were in that presentation. So there's some, uh, there, there, there's a linkage of, you know, uh, how was this decision put together, uh, a presentation of all the, the facts and, and all that stuff in terms of, uh, not only why is it the right move for the company, but why is it the right move for them? And again, yeah. you know, real has a pretty decent, um, uh, uh, reputation here locally in Winnipeg. And so there was some excitement just when that word came out, real broker, hey, that's kind of cool. Uh, now let's dive into what does that mean for you? Uh, 
And so, for example, like in, in my company, I, had, I have a, uh, a program we call it V-Bucks. And so, uh, you know, the agents at the end of the year get a rebate uh, back to them as a percentage of company dollar that they generate. Mm -hmm. So we, we, and yeah. we turn that into Christmas gifts or whatever you want to do with it, right? So you get points and you can cash <laughs> it out for, yeah. hey, someone got a TV and someone got, you know, a Dyson vacuum cleaner or whatever. Oh, that's cool. um, yeah. And if they bring an agent on board, they get some V-Bucks. Well, now, okay, the V-Bucks is, uh, re is replaced with, hey, you're getting stock, you're getting revenue share, you're getting, um, yeah. you know, all of these other benefits that are built into the real broker opportunity that I don't have to come up with. They're just built in. So yeah. um, that was really a big win-win where it's kind of like, oh, you mean we actually have the exact same opportunity as you do as a broker. So normally as a broker, right, I'm, I'm bringing in the agents and yeah, they get some V-Bucks and maybe some Christmas gifts at the end of the year. Uh, but that's pretty well where it stops. Uh, now with the rev share, uh, hey, they're bringing them in and, and I'm going to help them bring those people in either they're going to come into the team or they're going to be a solo independent agent or maybe there's a broker out there that's uh listening to this thinking hey I, i'd like to learn a little bit more i mean I, I i understand what you're sharing and um i'm kind of in the same shoes i'm on the same mindset so i'm happy to chat with anybody but as far as the agent goes there was an excitement you know it was it was it was presented well i feel and i think there was a level of excitement where they felt this is good not only for you frank but it's also good for us. We can win together. And that goes yeah. to speak with, with what you were saying about um, it's a win-win environment. And uh, so yeah. I, I, th I think that's huge uh, for any team leader, broker, owner kind of thinking, okay, you know, I'm going to make this change. Are my agents going to be scared? Are they going to leave? Are they going to jump? Are they going to feel like, you know, uh, we're making the wrong decision? And I think if it's presented properly, then the agents will be on board as much or more as the broker because the same opportunity that the broker has is, is available to the, all the agents. And that was a big point for us too, is to say, I'm not going to do it for you. I'm not going to shove your head in water and make you drink. Yeah. But if you want to build what I'm building, I'm here to help. Like if yeah. like I, I'm doing a, you and I were talking before we went live, I'm doing a, a call in a half hour. That's just basically, I believe for guys like you and I who've owned brokerages and things like that, the revenue share opportunity is, is great. Mm -hmm. But as, as far as impact on somebody's life, if a broker is out there listening to this and they're like, man, I need to connect with Frank. Number one, I think that's a great idea. You should. And number two, if they can properly get their agents to understand, if you're doing 10 transactions a year, your gross commission is a hundred grand. Your net commission is 60 grand we can show you very simply how to take that 60 to 120, mm -hmm. not by doing 20 transactions, but by being a magnet and a light to other agents in the industry. So I'm excited about that. Let's talk about this, Frank. Last thing. Sure. 2025 and beyond. Like what, you know, you've got this newfound optimism. You Six months ago, you were looking at 2025, like, all right, Versace Realty is going to do this, that, and this and that. And now you're like, all right, Frank's going to do this. My group's going to do this. I'm building a network that's going to do that. Like what is 2025 and beyond? What talk a little bit about the optimistic side of things. Like what, what are you looking to do in 2025? Sure. Um, I'd say, so first of all, uh, just a renewed excitement and fun about the business. I mean, you know, 20 years later and, and I'll, I'll chat with some realtors and, and uh, you know, they say, Oh, you seem still, you still seem excited, you know? And so for me, like, I don't want to just go through the motions. I want to go through uh, the business in, in an excited and fun way where there's some anticipation of uh, benefit for everybody. Um, so I do right. want to see, I do want to see the team win. I do want to see the team grow. I do want to expand uh, our, our local presence here with team members on the team. Um, at the same time, I do want to al uh, align with uh, the existing agents in the company, as well as other agents that are considering the opportunity. Um, even if they're solo agents, uh, they don't have to join the team. So um, right. that that whole cooperative, collaborative environment is something that, you know, you kind of miss when you're in a team ridge brokerage because you're right. really in a small ecosystem. And so being able to now expand, um, you know, there's a few uh, a real uh, broker agents in, in the city here that kind of reached out and said like, hey, welcome. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be seeing you at the events and, you know, kind of the local environment and stuff like that. So it'll be nice to sort of brainstorm and mastermind with that group at the same time, being able to add to that group, whether it's through myself or through my team members, 
um, that are helping to introduce the opportunity to other agents in our marketplace or outside of our marketplace. So that yeah. really kind of gets me excited as well. Um, and then freeing up like cash flow, uh, resources, brain space, all that stuff to really focus on that. Um, yeah. that that's another uh, part of the business that I think is, is really uh, going to be a great adventure going forward and, and being able to say, uh, hey, I don't, I don't have to now deal with all of the mundane. Uh, I can actually, I can actually focus on the fun and exciting stuff. Uh, so well, that's, I think that, yeah, I think that that's something that people don't understand. As a brokerage owner, you and I were constantly up against walls. Yeah. The brick and mortar of our office, our state, mm -hmm. our province, whatever it was. So generally, when we would get excited and passionate, the answer was no. <laughs> like, yeah. can I expand my brokerage into California? No, not unless you go get licensed, you get brick and mortar. Yep. Um, can I mentor this agent in another state or province without like taking a credit card? That would be awkward. Right. No, there's really not a way to do that. Yep. We're now being at real. It's yes. Like, mm -hmm. can I take my team into Utah or California or Arizona or, or Winnipeg? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I mentor and grow and build with somebody without saying like, hey, man, just give me your credit card for a coaching fee? Yes. Like, right. there's so many more yeses. You did hit on one thing that we've got, you know, maybe just a few minutes left. Talk about this concept of one reel, because when somebody comes over to the company, they select their sponsor and or sponsors. Mm -hmm. So there's a very natural connection there. I'm honored to be in that world with you. Yeah. But you mentioned that other agents in Winnipeg who are not part of your sponsorship group reached out and said, hey, man, welcome to the company. Let's build, let's grow. So talk about this concept, because as far as as real as a company goes, this is somewhat revolutionary. Yeah. Like we're not tribal. We're not siloed. It's not us versus them. It's not like, hey, we're at the same company, but we're, we're you know, competitors. Like what is that concept of that, that one real, let's do this, let's build together. What, what, is, what does that mean to you and why should other people find value in it? Yeah. And again, I you know, don't do a, ma a major comparison here, but that was one of the things that I did notice at the other company where it was, yeah. uh, I believe the word is siloed. Right. So join me, you get this and then you get this and you get this. And but you're stuck in this sort of um, this group. So, you know, choosing a quote unquote sponsor becomes so critical. And I think it is important no matter where you are. Sure. Um, but, uh, you, you know, the, the nice thing here with the one real concept is that you have literally access to everybody and everybody is collaborative. And I didn't, I, I understand, you know, I kept hearing that word collaborative, collaborative, collaborative. What, <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, I probably said it a hundred times in our conversations. Yeah. You know, like, what does that actually mean? And, you know, if you go to any other company, sure, there's camaraderie and we're, we're, um, we're cooperative, so to speak, to the extent that we're, you know, in the same company, if you're at a Remax or a Century 21 or whatever, um, inside the brokerage. But with one reel, I mean, it's literally boring borderless. I mean, so any training, I've seen so many different people putting out different uh, trainings um, and things that you can learn, uh, certainly in, in, uh, in uh, uh, the back end system or whatever, where you can plug in and watch all the different modules right. and, and, and all that stuff. So that's really neat. But the fact that, um, you know, people are kind of reaching out and saying, hey, welcome to the company. And, and uh, I don't think I, I don't think if I joined another company that I would get the same sort of quote unquote warm welcome. Um, it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah. okay, well, he's here. That's great. Um, so I yeah. really, that's something that's, that was unexpected. Um, and it is, it, it's great. I, I love it. So, um, I'm kind of looking yeah. forward to that. And I think at the end of the day, it, it stems from the fact that we're all building the same company and that company has a value right. on the stock exchange on the NASDAQ. So if we're all coll collaborative and we're all growing the company, we're all going to benefit. So we, right. have, we all have a vested well, interest, right? And I think that that's something that, that maybe it takes a while for people to understand. <laughs> like yeah. we literally are business partners, whether it's a revenue share world or not. Like if you own shares of stock in this company and I do, it's a small right. enough company that we're, to, to coin a phrase from the great poet, Zach Efron, like we're all in this together, right? Like, yeah. and, and so I'm glad you're seeing that. Well, Frank, I've done a few of these things. I, I think you're very articulate, uh, very well-spoken, but you. I know that this was a process for you. Um, it wasn't necessarily a, a quick decision. Uh, we had many calls. What, how would people connect with you? Because I think there's going to be brokerages. Do, I'm telling you guys, if you're listening to this, do not reach out to me. Reach out to Frank. Like how, how would someone get in touch with you if they're like, Hey man, I'm running a small brokerage in Pennsylvania and yep. or a large brokerage or a team, or I'm at another company. Like 
how, how, what's the best way for someone to get in touch with you? So first and foremost, what I would say is that um, anybody who does reach out, it's not going to be a sales pitch. It's not going to be a presentation. It's not going to be a push. It would be just literally a chat. And what I would share with them is what was the process that I went through in my mind to clearly get to the steps where it made sense to make a change. So, um, you know, sometimes people feel, well, if I reach out, you know, it's just going to be a push and a pull and, uh, you know, I, it, it's going to be uh, pressure. And, and that's not that's not it at all. I would literally just share yeah. where I came from and why it was important to me. And if it makes sense, it makes sense. If it doesn't, it's not a big deal. Um, so as yeah. far as reaching out, I'm going to give you my personal cell number, which is uh, 204-292-4848. So 204-292-4848. Um, email frank at versacerealestate.com. And if you Google my name, you'll find me. Uh, I'm on... Uh, <laughs> you I'm might on, find I'm some on, sweet like... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you might find some sweet clothes too. Some distant relative of Frank started a clothing company. Some people may have heard of. That's but, right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but no, I definitely well, listen, would invite. I definitely would invite anybody that has any questions. Right. I mean, I'm happy to chat. Yeah. And and that's really what it would be. It'd be just a conversation. So. And if you're listening to this podcast, so you know we get some people that watch it live, but a lot of times it's YouTube afterward or it goes on the podcast. Yeah. And you're like, man, this Frank guy seems put together. Like he seems it seems legit. Uh, it's because Frank is a great example of the caliber of people that are attracted to real. So if you're like, man, he just seems like a genuine dude. He is. He seems like a great business practitioner. He is. And that's what I love so much about what we're building together here at, at real. We've got, you know, at least on Facebook, Spring Benson reached out and said, hi, Marty Reinhardt, Sandra Ringal, Colleen uh, Bazinski. Like these are, these are great business people who are just excited to see you here with us because we truly are in this together. Guys, if you if something Frank has said has resonated with you, hit him up, solo agents, broker owners, team leaders, whoever you are, I it would be so off brand, not for real, but as a Canadian, if he if he was super pushy. <laughs> like Canadians are just the kindest people in the world. Uh, I love that you said it would just be a conversation. Yeah. And I also love that you would say that you said it would be about them. Because that that really is what this is about. It's not salesy it's not pitching no um i believe we make some compelling arguments but i also believe that that you know uh it has to resonate and work for somebody and i'll just tell you frank as a business partner of yours i'm excited that it resonated with you because i i truly believe we're just so lucky to have you at the company so welcome my friend oh thank you so much i'm, I'm really excited and looking forward to the future for sure so appreciate this time together mm -hmm.